Hello my friends and welcome, let's go for the latest update from Ukraine to Krynki, the landing operation of Ukrainian army. For the first time we have the reliable map that shows the advancement of the Ukrainian army across the Dnieper river and more to Krynki itself. The landing itself was done around 4 days ago, but now we are sure that we cleared some of the area from the Russian occupiers. However, Russia continued to use the aviation gliding bombs for the recent couple of days, they used more than 30 of those bombs to target the Ukrainian positions mostly not in Krynki but across the river in the Ukrainian controlled territory. So far Ukraine is out of the proper tools to counterreact to the Russian aviation gliding bombs and unfortunately Russia has many of those. They converted as America converted the JDAMs from the simple aviation bombs. Well the Russian aviation bombs are not that precise compared to JDAMs but they use them massively. So it is probably the biggest issue for Ukrainian forces to continue the offensive operation in this area. Ukraine actively uses the artillery systems to target the Russian positions. Also there was the case that Russia opened the friendly fire on their group which was retreating from this place. I showed you it on my telegram channel and you may check it out in the video description just below. I am unable to post the drone video of that case on YouTube platform, so I may just explain. Russians were forced to retreat to this forest, but there are the Russian positions and they thought that those are the Ukrainians who are just running on them and they opened the fire from the machine gun, lowering everyone around. Some of the Russian soldiers remained alive for some time, this is why Ukraine sent some of the gifts from the drones on them. Coincidence? Yes, and it's not for the first time for the Russian army. How do I know that it was the friendly fire? Because the information about it was spread across the Russian publics with detailed confirmation. As you can see, Ukraine performs lots of the surveillance in this place. It is the biggest air drone surveillance that I have seen on those military maps. It is good, maybe Ukraine plans for extension of this landing operation. By the way, our forces were spotted over here. So this area is confirmed to be freed from the Russian occupiers, but the fighting is ongoing in this yellow area and sometimes even targeted the Russian positions behind it. So now Russians are hiding in this forest, they have the positions over there. I believe they also hide here and here is mostly the open territory where they are unable to hide. Based on the drone operation, there is the possibility that the Ukrainian army might move to this village too. But it is quite complicated to land in this place because there are some of the islands on the Dnieper river and also the shore here is not really good as over here. Let's go for this map for the moment. So here's the Ukrainian landing operation. It's conducted over here and we have a couple of more vectors of the Ukrainian assault before it was also in Kazachi Lahiri. But there our forces cancelled uh, the attack for now. We also may see that Russia sent some of the reinforcements to this area. We have the vector of the Russian counterattack towards Krynki, but for now it's unsuccessful. So the main target for Ukraine, from what I can see, is to assault to this place and to this place cutting all of the Russian forces. However, it is still going kind of slowly. According to the Russian propaganda, Ukrainian generals are against this landing operation and it was mostly pushed by the president's office and Ukrainian politicians to show some sort of the results of the Ukrainian advancement operation because the main counterattack that was planned land for the summer and autumn mainly stalled and our western allies are not satisfied. Well, after all, there is some truth in that, but I believe that Ukrainian generals know what they do across the Dnieper in Kherson region. I believe that it is the start of something really bigger that might happen. Also, President Zelensky today announced that Ukraine is planning the unexpected attacks on the Russian Federation not on the south as it was before straightforward but something really different as it was in Kharkiv Oblast before last year when Ukraine liberated the most part of it. Nevertheless, speaking about the south, the Ukrainian counterattacks continue. Yes, they are small but they are effective at some certain spot so we continue to push the Russian army, not letting them to take their breath. So this is the latest advancement on the north and the Ukrainian army tries to expand the bridgehead that was created this summer and the autumn time. It will help Ukraine 
to propel forward to the south the next time, because there is still a big risk that Russia might concentrate their forces trying to encircle Robotina and all of this liberated area, as they try to do in Avdivka, attacking from two of the sides. It's their classical glove tactics. And here Ukraine did this punch, taking this territory, so obviously now this position is vulnerable from both of the sides. The idea is to expand and then move forward, cutting all of the Russian defense lines, but not with the current resources we have. We really need three times more resources compared to what we have right now for the successful operation towards Tokmak. For now, it's not possible. I call to my friends again and I ask them, what is the urgent equipment that Ukrainian army needs? They say that their parts and other sophisticated tools are very nice, they help a lot, but what Ukrainian army is really in desperate of are the standard mortars. We are also in lack of the heavy mortar mines. Because in a modern day war you cannot fully use the potential of the Leopards or Abrams tanks or Challengers, mostly the advancement happening with the help of the small infantry groups and backup from the armored infantry vehicles, like Bradley's or the Soviet-made BMPs. So to clear the way for advancement to take the Russian positions without the heavy resistance from them, we need to use mortars at first. Why the mortars? Because they are portable, they are very flexible and they are powerful at the same time. A very nice tool against the enemy soldiers in the trenches. If we use the cluster munition that we have on our standard artillery, it usually doesn't hurt the enemy in the trenches. It covers the area around on the top of the ground. So I still wonder why the issue with mortars haven't been solved so far for Ukrainian army. Because what you really need is the mortar, which is kind of cheap compared to artillery, it's basically the tube, and lots of the mines. We need that tool right now. Let's go to Avdivka for the short time. Russia mainly stopped their attacks in attempt to gain more resources for one more big strike. We already have the confirmation about it from the Institute for the Star Study of war. The big Russian attack might happen in the coming days. Today Ukraine has successfully eliminated the Russian air defense system near to Avdivka, its Panzer S, and it was targeted with the help of the Ukrainian artillery. It's completely gone, so our fighter jets and attack airplanes are able to operate in this particular place right now. Panzer S is, by the way, a very effective tool. However, Russia lost lots of them already because they moved them very close to the front lines. Very, very close. About the yesterday's possible strike on the Rostov-on-Don Russian military base, for now it hasn't been confirmed what was really targeted in Rostov. If we check out the Deep State military map update from Avdivka, there is the slight Russian army movement near to Krasnohorivka, but it is just the grey area movement, the fighting there is not as intense as it was recently. We have different information about the Russian advancement, for sure they are unable to take Stepove for now, and some say that they crossed this railroad. I said about it around 4 days ago, I think, and yes, there was the video confirmation about this case that at some point they crossed it, however, today I am not sure, because the front line is unstable and may fluctuate not in a matter of days, but in a matter of hours, so what we see on those military maps is basically the average positions of the Ukrainian and the Russian forces approximate positions. Russia released some of the videos from their drones, how they assault not far away from Krasnohorivka, the Avdivka direction, how they fire towards the Ukrainian positions from their tanks. It means that this place is not yet under control by the Russian army. But later on our guys released those images of what happened to the Russian advancement in that place. They used few of the tanks and all of them were kaputed. The Russian S-300, the long-range Russian air defense system, was targeted not far away from Berdansk. Those are the remains of the vehicle. Based on the grass around, I still think that it's kind of the old photo that just appeared in internet today. Otherwise, the grass would have been burned around this place.
place. What we have again is the Russian advancement near to Vuhledar, so it was yesterday and it is today. Unfortunately, they took uh, the part of this field. However, I'm not sure whether the live Russian soldiers took this place and not just their corpses and demolished vehicles, because we have the video from the place. Let me show you. So those images were released today. Russia tried once again to attack Vuhledar, so this is their convoy. We have several of the armored vehicles or something like that and obviously tanks what happened to them probably you already know it is their usual tactics to go somewhere and be demolished but if they use those waves constantly they may achieve some local success taking some ground unfortunately so if you don't really care about your losses you can send them again and again and that is how you may achieve some success that is what happened in Bakhmut and that is what happening near to Vuledar and Avdivka obviously it seems like Ukraine used the attackers missiles or the storm shadow again attacking the Russian supply base in Sedova village this village is located not far away from Mariupol and was used as the Russian supply hub so they deliver some of the goods with their ships because there is the port nearby and after all, they transferred all of the weaponry to the front line, so today there was the big kaboom. Again, the confirmation comes from the Russian publics. Well, definitely it's the huge and wonderful firework there. Based on those sparks, it's 100% some sort of the weaponry exploding in that place. Maybe even the Russian air defense rockets. Let's measure the distance to that place from, let's say, this position from the front lines exactly 100 kilometers a little bit more than 60 miles quite a long distance the standard rocket artillery is unable to reach the place so it was attack amps or the cruise missile scalp or storm shadow the satellite images of the damaged russian military ship in Kerch were released today so this is before the attack and this is after the attack unfortunately we have this glowing on this picture nevertheless you may spot two of the holes in the ship construction so definitely it was severely damaged there was no fuel inside because the ship was under construction not yet being in use by the russian army the ship name is as called it was confirmed that it was targeted by ukrainian cruise missiles by ukrainian officials and also by russians so 100 we may trust this information oh this glowing happened because of the clouds just over the carriage port the new york times came out with the article saying that there is some friction between the president's office and general command of the ukrainian army i told you about it yesterday there could be some of the friction however i think that it's not really that significant as they say plus one of the authors of this article is andrew kramer and he wrote some of the bullshit before about ukraine so i don't have the trust in this author however as i told you yesterday there could be some of the friction between president and zaluzhny about military and politicians if we speak in that form at the same time cnn writes that ukrainians trust zaluzhny more compared to zelensky because zaluzhny is not hesitating to say the things as they are say the truth and I would agree with that but the president's rating is still high in ukraine i think that the best job that zelensky does for ukraine is consolidating the military support of our country yes recently because of the political instability for example in the united states senate it was hard to get the new military help it is hard right now nevertheless we still obtain the military support from allies but how to use the weaponry on the front lines the strategy i think it lies in competence with Valery Zaluzhny because he is the professional military. So I was really surprised that Zelensky removed the deputy of Zaluzhny, General Horenka, just a couple of days ago without letting Zaluzhny even know about this. So it is not really a good sign. But I think that it's not that dramatic hopefully about the sad and tragic case that happened to our artillerists just to remind you one of the senior officers gathered them at the same place not far away from the front lines we're speaking about 128 artillery brigade so russia released the drone footage how they targeted 
the building with Ukrainian officers and unfortunately many of our guys lost their lives. For this hour it has been reported about 28 people who lost their lives plus 53 were delivered to hospitals with wounds. The investigation is ongoing. The strategy happened at the day of the Ukrainian artillery forces. So it was some sort of the award ceremony or celebration. It's crazy. Okay, to some of the other news. Israel intercepted the ballistic missile in the space for the first time in the human history. This missile was launched from the Yemen territory, so I don't know what tool Israel used to intercept it, but the interception was successful. I'll read more information about it and publish the details on my Telegram channel. So again, my friends, I highly recommend you to be updated on Ukrainian topic and not only on my Telegram. About the Gaza city, well, it was cut and encircled basically so RDF is pushing towards the city itself now more or less successfully. I think in a couple of weeks they might take the city under control. Also they have started multiple attacks on the other parts of the Gaza territory. This is not the Photoshop, this is the real photo taken in Ukraine just right now. The sky is glowing in red color because there is significant solar activity these days. The solar activity is very high for the next couple of days but after it drops. So if you live closer to the north you'll see the fantastic sky if it's not cloudy. My friends, now press the like to this video and also if you want to support my job, please check out some of the links in the video description just below. Special thanks for my Patreon supporters and the sponsors of my YouTube channel. Guys, thank you so much for your support. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.